The basic effects included with the Light Shark are very versatile and powerful and can do a lot of different things. Let's dive in with a few examples and show you how to use the controls for the basic effects. First, I'm going to select a group. As we discussed previously, if you're using your own groups that you've built, not the automatic groups, you can go into Edit, edit the group, and add in a 2D layout plan. With the 2D fixture layout, we can then use those within the effects. Once your group is selected, head down here to Effects or use the Hard button on the LS1 console. Now, across the top, we have our different types of effects by parameter group. Intensity, Position, Beam, Color, and Advanced. These match the parameter groups that we see on the right side of the console. And thus, the parameters within those groups are what we can work with to build our effects. First, I want to do a simple example, so I'm going to press Find on my fixtures. These are the overhead moving lights. And now I'm going to select a type of effect. For each effect, there are different types, and for some of the effects, such as position, you can scroll to find more shapes. Let's start with a basic intensity effect. Since I've turned the fixtures on, I'm going to do a chase down. Now by default, we see a couple things. First, it runs the effect based on selection order by default. The order that it runs the effect is shown by this arrow right here. These arrows allow you a variety of different ways to run the effect. If you're just using an automatic group, then it will be by the order of the fixture number that the effect runs, and you can switch it between forwards, backwards, center out, etc. However, if you built a 2D layout fixture position grid, then you can do many more shapes. You're able to scroll through them using these arrows or dragging, or by pressing the All button here. As you can see, there are some really powerful different shapes here. For example, front to back, or back to front, center to out. All of these are based off of the shapes that are built in. I'm going to do a left, right, center to out. Now we have size, speed, phase, and width. Let me explain these with a few examples. First, we have size. Size is the amount that the effect moves off of wherever the starting point of the light is. In this example, we had just pressed find, so the lights are at full, and then they're coming down from there. So if I set a size of 50%, now we can see that the lights are moving from 50 to 100%. If I move it lower, they move even less during the effect. And as I move it higher, they move more, all the way to 100%, where the fixtures turn all the way off to zero and then come back to full. Next, we have our speed control. By default, this will be in seconds, but we can change it to BPM by just holding and then pressing the BPM button, at which point we're able to tap tempo. And then the window goes away. We can modify it on the encoder wheel or switch back to seconds as desired. When switching back and forth between seconds and BPM, the value will automatically be translated so that it's the same speed. Next, we have phase. Phase is the spread of the fixtures across the effect. By default, it's at 180. As we can see, that means that there's a set of fixtures that runs the effect right away, and then halfway through the effect, there's a second set that begins. If we go down to 90, what we can see is that now we get four steps within this effect. Now I've got vertical rows of about three fixtures, and so we see three of those steps. If I change my shape, we can see it starts to look different. This one looks nice with these rows of fixtures in the air, and we see four distinct steps. The phase can go anywhere from zero, all of the lights exactly the same, up to 180 every other, and then above 180, it essentially repeats the numbers below 180, 
until you get all the way up to 360 where the fixtures are back together again. The closer you get to 360 or zero, the closer the fixtures are in the effect. The closer you are to the middle, the more balanced the effect looks. I'll go ahead and leave this at a phase of 90. As with any of the values, you can use the encoder wheels, use your finger on the on-screen interface, or hold and type to be able to enter your number. Phase is also available as spread, which is the same type of control, but it's a number between 1 and 1024, instead of phase, which is degrees 0 to 360. Last, we have width. Width, to me, is the hardest to comprehend, but allows you to do some pretty powerful stuff. So as we bring down the width, what we see here is basically that the space between the fixtures as it runs the effect becomes tighter or becomes wider. Phase and width work together in some interesting ways. So while phase sets the number of steps, per se, that the effect runs at a time, Width gives you the space in between those steps, if those steps have gaps between them or if they're very close together, etc. Let's go ahead and look at a few different other basic effects. I'll find my fixtures again, and this time we'll work with position. We can do a tilt effect, and I'm going to start with the phase at zero. All of the fixtures are working together. I'm going to select a shape, back to front, and then dial in a phase till I like what I see. And then maybe I make the width a little bit closer to make the effect a little bit unbalanced. And now I can go ahead and record this. When we go to record effects, we can press record and record them in any regular queue. We can also record them in the effects palettes under the advanced tab. So if we press record, we can go to advance, record it as an effects palette. Then if I find my fixtures again, I can tap that effects palette and it's made live. Effects are also available for any other attribute that the given light has. So if I look at my beam effects here, I see that I have focus effects, I have zoom effects, but I don't have an iris effect because this particular fixture does not have an iris. Similarly, with color, you're going to have RGB or CMY effects, but this light in particular has neither of those. We also have block effects. Block effects allows you to do exactly what it sounds like, to block effects from other playbacks. This can be really useful. Let's go ahead and play back this effect that we created just a minute ago. It has a pan tilt effect. It's playing from the playback. And now if I go to position and do block effects, that effect will stop. I can record that to a new playback. And if I play that playback, the effects stop. This can be really powerful, especially if you have one playback that maybe has effects for multiple attributes and then you add a block effect for only one of those attributes, such as pan tilt, to another fader or playback. Last, there is no effects. No effects simply clears out the effects parameters. So maybe I was working with a pan effect. I see it in my programmer here. I can go back to my palettes, type no effects. And after I've pressed no effects, I see that that effect has been cleared from the programmer and I'm ready to start with something fresh. I hope you enjoy working with the basic effects on your Light Shark. If you've been a Light Shark user for a long time, you can see they've been greatly improved, and there's really a lot you can do with them to make a really versatile, interesting show.